Welcome to this episode. Today we're looking at how to create custom casework in Rhino Inside for Revit. And if we go ahead and just take a quick peek at the finished file, we're going to be looking at Renzo Piano's design. And I just pulled this image from Pinterest on the internet. And we're looking at creating this, this uh, custom casework. And basically, the design on the right side here, the script is going to eventually put it as Revit Native Geometry. And if we run it, if we run it with Grasshopper, we have control over the spacing of all this. And so if I just click that, you can see it's updating pretty quickly. Um, we'll we'll sort out the basic concept, and then there's a few a few issues here, but for the most part, it works. And I think there's a lot to learn here. So you can see here even the vertical spacing, that's super, super stable. Um, and basically, uh, this is all Revit Native geometry that can be loaded in the family environment through Rhino right Inside. And then if we actually change the curve here, you can also manipulate that and everything updates almost instantaneously. So, whoops. So if you see here, uh, that's just kind of the solution. All right, so if you want to, uh, one of the big things that we learned in this one too is that there's actually how I use profiles. So we can quickly change out the profile type. So if I didn't want the one by 12, I wanted a deeper set, I could do one by 24. And that's quickly gonna change there as well. Um, one by six. And it pretty much up, updates instantly. So I show how to use that workflow in this one as well. All right. Hey, and if you're just tuning in for the first time, my name is Tim Halverson. This is the Sevenfold Design Technology page where we unlock your creativity through the power of design technology and architecture. And if you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe, and make sure you're tuning in for more content. We're gonna keep be po we're gonna be posting so much fresh content uh, throughout 2021 and beyond. So definitely let me know what you're curious to learn in the comments below. And without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this lesson. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is if it's not working for you right away, go ahead and shut down Revit and Rhino and Grasshopper and launch everything from scratch. I'm gonna go ahead and just open up Revit 2021. And again, you can use this in Revit 2020, um, whatever version of Rhino you have. Rhino 6, Rhino 7 both work. And uh, if you want to get a quick preview of the script here, basically this is the, the finished product. Um, we're using the Revit Rhino um, direct shape component. And setting that, that category, we're going to be using Pufferfish in there, um, doing some Boolean operations and sweeps. This is an important one, which is your um, translate component going from one plane to the next um, to get those sweeps and profiles in there. Um, then just doing some organization in here, uh, extending the curve quite a bit. And then if you don't already have it, make sure you have paneling tools. That's a plugin that's required for this workflow. And, um, and then down here is where we reference in profile curves um, per, for the vertical and then for the horizontal. And then this is just basically how we get that to translate into our framing. So that's just kind of where we're going here. Um, if that doesn't make sense, that's okay. We're going to walk through this whole thing. But generally speaking, um, this, this section over here is the profile curve. This is what we put in pretty much just that one input curve from the Rhino environment is going to get us everything we need. And then we, bench, we eventually just rationalize that and put it into Revit geometry. All right, so we are back finally. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make some space here. I'm gonna go ahead and just do new, uh, whoops, new family. And again, English Imperial, go down to generic model template, hit open. So then I've got my views open here to launch run inside. I'm gonna go add-ins and launch Rhino. Now that that's launched, I'm gonna go ahead and start by launching Rhino instead of Grasshopper directly. I'll do Rhino first. 
Should pop right up there. Okay, and then I'm gonna double click on perspective. Actually, let's do front view. And then while that's still getting in place here, I'm gonna go ahead and just launch Grasshopper by typing Grasshopper in space. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead into the Rhino environment. I'm gonna get a control point curve and just start to model something like the shape from my uh, inspiration image. Okay, and if I want to reference that, I've got it right here. So I'm just kind of getting that curve up there. And uh, something like that. You can feel free to control this afterwards, uh, but I'm just going to generally pull this below the line and this above the line to kind of get that shape in there. Then I'm going to go ahead and do a polyline curve here and holding uh, shift and tab to lock the direction. And if I want to keep grid snap on, I can zoom in there and just set that. Holding shift and tab to lock the direction and then finishing that with the right click. Select everything and just join it. And then I'm going to come up here to Grasshopper, go to params and curve. Right click on that and say set one curve and bring that in. Okay. So we should be seeing something over here. And if we are not, Okay, try this again. Okay, so there, okay. So there's my preview geometry. I'm in a Revit project environment rather than a family template. And it's showing up right away, which is as anticipated. And then if I run that and then go to new family, English Imperial, generic model. Okay, so basically we can, we can proceed. So uh, I know that even though um, sometimes the preview is a little buggy right now, um, I'm able to go ahead and link geometry into my family. So I'm going to go ahead and just, okay, so I've referenced my curve in, and if I'm having a tough time seeing that, I can just go ahead and grab a uh, Revit direct shape curve uh, component here, and that'll just drop a representation into my model. So let's go ahead and start to work with this. So what we want to do is start to break this down. So I'm going to go ahead and in Grasshopper, I'm going to just build uh, a surface and just doing this um, boundary surface right here and pipe that in. Okay. And pretty much for, for the short term, I'm just going to be working mostly in the Rhino interface over here. So if I'm just going to go to a perspective view and that'll give me a better look at my design. And I'm just going to set this to Arctic. Okay, so next thing I want to do is just grab the lower edge of my surface. So to do that, I'm going to go to Surface, Util, and then do Edges from Direction. And put the surface into the BREP input there. And then the direction is a vector, so I'm just going to do that in the, um, the X direction there. So basically that's just along the X. So if I just type in X, I can do unit X and then go ahead and pipe that into the direction. So now I'm getting just this bottom edge here. If I had, um, if I had actually created this as a straight line, I would be getting both of those lines. But in this case, because I have this curved on the top, I'm getting just the bottom edge. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to break these apart into their own curve edges. So I'm going to go ahead and just deconstruct BREP and feed that surface in. Before I go too much farther, I'm also going to 
use paneling tools and that's the P here. Again, this is an add-in, check it out, Food for Rhino. And I'm gonna go ahead and do grid, surface domain length, and feed that into the surface. And then these are requiring two input vectors, uh, two input dimensions. Now, because I know that my, my model space is set to feet, and I wanna control this in inches, I can do that by converting the units. So, First thing I would want to do is I'm going to set up a slider. So I'm going to say one less than 72, less than 100. Thinking of this in inches in my case. And if I was to put that in right now, it would actually just do it in feet. Okay, so I wouldn't see anything happening right away. So to convert that to inches without changing my document, I can just go to human and grab this little uh, convert to document units. And then I'm going to input some inches. So to, to make it look like inches, I'm going to put this in and then add the inches symbol, which is the quotes. And that's going to go ahead and understand it. So my output there is just 72 inches. And then if I feed that into the conversion, you can see it's going to be um, converting it down to six, which is six feet. Okay, I'm going to feed that in. And then um, I'm also going to just copy that one more time and do that for my other one here and then feed that in. So now you can see that I'm getting a grid on my surface. And if I started to just slide this down, I can start to make it more dense. Okay. If I want to add a reference point, I could just do that as well. And I'm just typing in endpoints to my extracted edge there and just feeding the star point right there into the start point there. So now everything is beginning from this relative uh, direction. Okay, then what I want to do is trim this grid to the surface that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to paneling tools, go to grid utilities and do trim grid. And I'm going to feed that grid in and I'm going to feed the surface into there. So now if I just hide that, you can see how it's trimming. And then if I just check the mode there, I actually want it to be number two edge so that I'm getting something on the edge there. So just doing quotes and two, feeding that in. Now that's gonna give me um, points along the edges here. Okay. The next thing I wanna do is I want to um, start to get some information out of that. So what I want to do is eventually I want to create a line that spans across just in the rows here. And if I take a look at what I'm getting inside of this grid, uh, there's a bunch of null points that were found when I trimmed this grid. So they were valid points back here. And then when I did the trim, it became a null point. So I, I want to go ahead and call those out. So in order to identify those, I can just type in null, null item. And these aren't technically null, but they will get flagged for invalid. So I can see the ones that are null are going to turn out true. And then the ones that are good points are actually coming in false, which means they're not null, which means they're good. So all I can do is just Flip that by doing a not gate, switching the falses to trues, right? That's just flipping that there. And then I can just do a cull pattern. And if you're looking for where that is, it's up here in the sets tab. And just feeding that pattern in. And I'm gonna get that from my grid here, okay? So now that's giving me just those points. And if I take a look towards the top here, there's a bunch of empty uh, rows where it trimmed. So I want to go ahead and um, get those out. So to just remove those branches that I don't need anymore, I'm going to first just right click and say simplify. That simplifies my branch there. And then I'm going to do prune. And I'm just going to say remove anything with less than one item. So quotes and one, feeding that into the n sub zero. 
that's just going to keep only the, the branches that have things inside of them. Okay. And now, if I want to get just the endpoints, so just the ones, um, if I'm unsure, okay, so what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and get the points here on either edge. So within that, basically the first point is item zero and the last point is item four. In some cases it's item nine and that, that's gonna be a variable size. So I just wanna get the first item and the last item depending on the branch. So by default, you can see here, uh, this is, oops. You can see right there, it's um, zero item index by default. So I can just feed that in. And that's just gonna give me the first point in each row, okay? And then what I wanna do next is just um, alt drag or copy of that, right click and reverse that list, and that should give me the last point in the list, okay? And we can, um, we can deal with some of this too. It looks like there's some points that are outside the bounds of of that edge there, but generally speaking, this should be working. It looks like there's some, some weird cases where it doesn't quite solve. You can see that. Um, which is really weird. So if you're having some issues with the point getting to the surface, you could filter those out. And so let's just go ahead and do that really quickly. So I'm just gonna do a uh, closest point and I'm gonna say surface closest point. And I'm gonna take all my points that I fed in here and I'm gonna feed those back from my surface back here. So feeding that in and I can basically test to see any point that's on the surface should be zero. And anything that shouldn't be there is gonna be above zero. So what I wanna do is basically just create a filter. So I'm gonna do less than, and I'm gonna say it has to be less than 0.01 distance away from the surface. And so if that's true, it's gonna keep it in place. So this one should be false, which it is. So now if I just do a cold pattern there, getting that true false into the pattern and then keeping those points. Now I should be only getting the points that are on my surface. And now if I test that out, I should be getting the correct um, points as anticipated. Okay, so that, that that gets rid of all these points here and all those there and this stuff back here. So now you can see I'm basically just getting just the points on the edges there. So that kind of helps filter out some unnecessary points. Cool, so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna basically create a line between these two endpoints. And it looks like there's some issues with the sorting here. So if you're having issues like I am, we can go ahead and just try this a different way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a project. This is a slightly different method. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, go ahead and take all these points on the left side and project them to the right side. And I'm gonna go ahead and Take the first points, which is that point right there. And I'm gonna project it along the X direction. So just unit X. And the geometry I'm gonna project it onto is my surface back here. Actually, I'm gonna do it as my curves before the surface. And you can see it went ahead and fed it across in the perfectly X direction. Okay, next, 
Uh, there's going to be cases where it misses, that's fine. So it looks like we had a null um, that wasn't working out there. So I could clean my tree and feed that in and remove empties by setting it to true. Okay, and then if I'm not get every, getting everything, I can just pull out just the branches that were connecting, and I can just split that tree with those masks. So for masks, just put in the paths, which is just this list of paths that did connect, and I'll feed that from the cleaned out tree here. And then I should have a clean list. So these points are the end points and these ones are the beginning points there. So now I basically just have my list of points that are formatting these lines. Okay. So there we go. So now if I just start to flex this a little bit, you can start to see if I change this. That's going to start to work here a little bit. Okay, super cool. So now, what I want to do is I want to get some profiles and start to sweep those profiles along these, these newly formed lines. Okay. So in order to do that, I've already created a profile model. And that's up in my library here. So let me go back to the library. Profiles. And I've just got a rectangles profile. And I can just drag and drop that in and just say attach file. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring in these profiles here. And you can see in the name and the properties, I've actually given these a dedicated name. So for the size of the profile, I've gone ahead and named each of these. And now what I can do is I can basically just reference in those curves. So again, if you're confused where that is, just go to your layers. You can see here as a work session file, it's just brought in that information as a work session. So if you ever update this, you can just right click, go to work session reference and update that model. And you can make all your changes in one model and then have that propagate through to where your scripts are referencing that model. So to get that linked in, I can just go to the params tab and curve. And I can select all these curves and right click and say set multiple curves. And then next, I'm going to go ahead and Go to Elefront. Again, if you haven't got Elefront, download it, foodforrhino.com. And I'm going to do attributes and get Rhino attributes. And then zooming, that, zooming in, I'm going to feed in my curves. And then just pulling up a quotes here. I can see that those names are being pulled off of the curve. Okay. So to pick the one that I want, I'm going to go ahead and just go to the human tab and get this item selector. And that's going to give me just the one I'm picking from. So I'm going to use this one by 12, but I can change this later. So to pick that from the list, I'm just going to do member index. And I'm going to say, okay, go ahead and search for this member from this list of names. 
and return that index. And it happens to be index zero. But if I change this, it would change it to the, the appropriate index that I wanted. Okay, and then just do item. And from this list of curves, pick this item. Okay, and now I'm getting just that curve there. And if I want to just make sure I'm getting the right one, I can just set up a little preview, custom preview there. And um, I actually like to do the line weights one just here in the human tab with the, the custom preview line weights. And that lets me set the thickness here. I'm just going to feed that geometry in. I'm going to set the swatch to blue. And then the thickness, I'm just going to set that to like a three or a four, something fat. So now in my Rhino um, viewport, I can see which which profile I'm, gonna, I'm going to use before I actually use it, so I know um, that it's correct. Okay, cool. So now that we have that, we can, uh, we basically just need to set up how this is going to be inserted into our rails, okay? So the command we're eventually gonna be landing on is in the transform tab, Euclidean and Orient. Right, which is going to take our profile geometry and the source plane and then map that onto the plane that we're going to sweep uh, it, it along. So that's going to go way over here. But let's go ahead and set up the, the source plane. Okay. So to set up the source plane, we're going to just highlight, we're going to zoom in here and focus on just this area. So we want to go ahead and set it right along the inside center point edge or the upper edge. So what I'm going to do is just like before, I'm going to do these two things. I'm going to alt drag copy and feed in that profile curve to here. And that's going to give me just the, um, the surface. And then if I extract the edges, you can see it's giving me just the short edges there because it's facing the X direction. And that was intentional. That was how I set up my profile model. And now I can just, um, I can sort these. So I'm basically going to make sure I get the one that's closest to the base here. So to make sure I get that, I'm going to do, uh, let's do point and we're going to do actually, sorry, plane, plane coordinates. And we need a point and a plane. And I'm gonna sort that along the world X, Y. So everything is gonna be relative to the world X, Y system. And the point, I'm just gonna take a midpoint on these edges. So just going to curve, going to um, point on a curve, it defaults to 50%. You can see I'm creating those points there. I'm going to test these relative to the world x, y plane. Okay, so I'm basically asking how y are you? So if I, if I put that in, this y output is going to test how far away you are in the y axis. Okay, so if I just take a look at that, one of them is zero because it's right at the edge there, and then the other one is one. If I had picked a different profile, the result here is 1.5 because that's 1.5 feet, which is 18 inches because that's my document units. So basically, um, this is a distance factor. So two is two feet, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what's going on there. Um, let's go back to the one by 12. You can see it's testing that edge there. And now I'm just going to sort, just to make sure I'm getting this right, um, I'm going to sort these edges by this key. And then do an item and pull out just that base edge there. So now I know no matter what happens, I'm always going to be getting the same consistent edge that I'm going to be sourcing my sweep from. Okay, so that stabilizes all of that. And then I'm also going to 
just feed in my points here as well. So um, let's go ahead and feed those into B. So I'm going to sort those as well. And then I'm going to rename this to say curves, just so I remember. Alt tracker copy, feed in my points, and say points. So now I need to go ahead and set a plane. I need to model a plane here. Go to plane, construct plane. And then take the point, feed the point into the origin. Okay. And this is basically going to be my source plane. Now, I can start to work on referencing that in a different way. Um, if I want to display this a little bit smaller just for simplicity, I can go to plane preview size and make that like 0.5. And you can see that's adjusting right there. Okay. So, so then um, I'm going to make this my source plane. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom that out and make that A. So that's the source plane I'm pulling from. The geometry I'm looking to map is my profile curves, which is actually way back over here. That's where we fed that in. And then, and then the target plane is what we're about to set up. So, okay, so now the target plane is going to be relative to the lines that we put on there. So I'm going to go ahead and just zoom back out here. And here's all of my, my rail lines. And to get a plane on each of these, I'm going to go ahead and do endpoints. And I'm going to pull out just the start point there, there. And then I'm going to construct a plane with the start point as the origin. And actually not construct a plane. I'm going to do plane normal. So the origin point is my start point and the line is my end point. Okay. And that's going to feed it in right there. Okay. So now if, if we're having any issues with this lining up as intended, there's one more step we can do. So just uh, feel free to leave a comment below if you're having issues with having these all line up in the same direction. So the next thing I want to do is just take that as my target plane and feed that into B. And you can see right there. Okay. So now um, I'm going to actually rotate this 90 degrees. I'm going to go to plane, rotate plane, right click on this angle input and make it degrees. And then I'm gonna just create um, create a panel here and just do 90 and 180 and 270. So that gives me some options here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to params and value set picker and feed that in. And if I'm having issues with this sorting, I can just put some leading zeros in there. Just so it sorts as intended. There we go. And now I'm just going to feed that into the rotation angle and the plane. And if I pick one, I can just kind of pick one at a time. And then feed that into this the target plane. And now you can see that as I pick this, I can just figure out which one is the direction I want to work with. And one more thing too, um, if you want to work with um, the origin of this, I've got it on, set as the midpoint. I could change that by just going back here and working with this midpoint slider and just pushing that up between zero to one. So if I wanted it to be at one, it's going to set that down to be at the top face there. All right, so now that we have that all set up, we have our profiles and we have our rails here. Now we just need to set that up for the sweep. So if I just feed that in and hold shift, I can verify that these are all lining up. You can see that my branches aren't quite lined up yet. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just say um, principal. And what that basically did is it forced the lines to keep their branch structure as I went through so that this is the thing that's driving the branch structure. And um, it helped keep it consistent, even if that starts to change. Um, so now that they're lining up, you, you could have been simplifying as well along the way, but basically I just made sure that as we came into this translate component, there's three inputs. I wanted the, um, these planes to be driving the branch structure. That's why I said principal. Okay. So now we can just go to surface and go to freeform and sweep. And this just takes rails and sections. So the sections are right here and the rails are my lines. I'm gonna feed that in right there. And voila, there we go. Now, one important thing I did do before is I actually extended that rail a little bit farther beyond the outer edge of my curve here so that I could actually chop it back to avoid this little gap here at the edge. So if you want to do that little um, tuning of your system, you can just do extend curve and you can feed in your rail curves here and you can set the type to you know line arc or smooth i'm just going to do line so quotes and zero and then i'm just going to overset that like one foot maybe two feet just just for good measure and so l sub zero is just the beginning of the curve and then l1 is the end of the curve so i could i'm just going to make them the same distance and then I can just control shift uh, to drag all this into my curve output and then just feed that curve right in there. So that was control shift to, to do all those things there. All right. And now that basically just extended, um, it extended that, okay? All right. So finally, we're going to go ahead and chop those a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. So the way I want to chop it is actually by getting this uh, curve here, this upper curve. There's a couple ways to do that. Um, I'm basically just going to, there's a couple ways to do it. I'm gonna go ahead and just, there's, there's a couple ways to do it. I'm gonna do it more simple this time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to copy and say copy objects in place by right clicking. And then I'm going to explode those lines. Actually undo that. Okay, so I'm gonna explode those curves there. I'm gonna hold control and click this top curve to keep it. Then I'm gonna delete those bottom curves. So now I'm gonna take this curve here and I'm gonna work with that and I'm gonna reference it in. So let's just go ahead and go to params and curve and right click on that and say set one curve. And I'm gonna do a couple things with it now. So basically I can work with it. Um, typically I like to keep it consistent, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and just move that. And the direction I'm gonna move is Y relative to Y. And I'm gonna set the amplitude to um, let's just do like five, just so it's beyond what I know I need. And then I'm going to move it five. 
Okay, so I moved it over there. And then I'm going to extrude it twice the size in the opposite direction. So to do that, I'm just going to alt drag a copy here. I'm going to right click on the A input and say negative 2 times x. And then I'm going to feed that into the direction of my extrusion and feed in my curve. And that's going to basically give me one continuous curve right there. Okay. Um, all right. If I wanted to, you know, do some more work with that, um, I could just add in a line here and So I'm just adding in these lines here, control J to join that. I'll re-reference that in as set one curve. And now I should have one continuous um, extrusion. And that's what I'm gonna be using to chop my horizontal members there. All right, so next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do intersect, shape and split b-rep and i'm going to say go ahead and split all these b-reps based off of this cutting shape right here okay and that's going to give me a bunch of open b-reps typically going to keep chop off the edges here and then leave the big one in the middle now if i'm not sure which one it is i can just test um, the area of each of these and then I can sort uh, sort these with the area being the key and the split geometry as the A input and then um, it's gonna put the one with the highest area at the bottom I know that that's actually the one I want to keep so I'm actually gonna reverse this list and then type an item Feeding that in, it should give me just the cut geometry back. Okay, so I'm just gonna unpreview that stuff and all this stuff. And now you can see I've got my cut geometry right there. Cool, so now finally, what I can do to close this off is I can basically just and the reason I want to make sure it's a solid piece of geometry is so that when I bring it into Revit, it's going to keep that cut pattern as we want, rather than just having um, lines only. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in cap to cap holes. And that's going to turn these from open B-reps into closed B-reps. Cool. Now that we've done all this work, we want to get this batch into Revit, okay? So to do that, I'm going to go to the Revit tab, go to Direct Shape, I'm going to do Add Geometry Direct Shape. That gives me some additional data I can attach to my geometry. And I'm just going to give this a name. So my inspired Renzo Piano case work. For the name and then the category I can say input um, here we go direct shape categories and I'm going to set that to casework and then geometry and voila I could also set the material if I wanted to at this point but I'm going to avoid that for right now cool so That's starting to work for me. Um, now basically we just have to repeat that same process for the vertical members and we're basically on our way. So um, this is getting a bit long. 
So just as a quick test, we kind of repeat this process for the vertical members too. So I can, if you want to test it, just go back to the beginning here and test out your profile. And you should see that propagate through. And I could really test this by doing a one by 24. And you can see that that's working. So there's my one by six. That's pretty sweet. And we can test this out just a little bit more by changing the size here. Yep. And it's pretty cool because you can see how quickly that was updating for me. So yeah, definitely recommend checking this out. Um, if you want to stick around, all right, so I will go ahead and show the vertical work workflow as well. Um, I realize this tutorial is getting pretty long. It's essentially the same workflow, just setting a different profile size and a different set of vertical um, members to, to draw those lines, set the profile, extrude those, and then trim it once again, similar to what we just did for the horizontal members. And then the final touch I do at the end is just creating an extrusion for that upper trim area. Um, but it's pretty much the same workflow. It's all grasshopper driven modeling and, and then just feeding that into Revit as um, a direct shape B-Rep. So if you wanna stay tuned for that, I will finish this out, but otherwise appreciate you tuning in. Um, definitely remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when we upload new videos every um, every time we upload and if you haven't already get on the bim academy newsletter um, we'll be coming up with courses and learning content for all things architecture design technology related um, so definitely stay tuned for that but again thanks so much for learning with me today i hope this was useful for you and um, just let me know if there's anything else you want to learn drop a little line in the comments below and um, stay curious i will definitely See you in future videos. Thanks so much. So we are going to make it. We are going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. So this took me quite a bit of time to figure out the other day. I tried a whole method of doing the same thing in uh, outside of Rhino inside. That is, does that even make sense? I tried it doing a Revit family <laughs> and then using cut geometry and this did not work. Um, I tried it like a million different ways. We'll talk through that later. But um, yeah, so let's just finish this workflow. And then I'll do a separate video on my flexible casework that I made. Um, but basically this whole workflow was driven off of the attempt at doing um, a family with an array. And then once I did that array, cutting that array based off of a custom shape. And I realized that the cut part was not possible in the family environment uh, without a tremendous amount of difficulty. So I actually found scripting something up in Grasshopper was much easier, much more intuitive once you got the hang of it and uh, much more robust for capturing the design intent. So for this particular workflow, I'm gonna keep using the Grasshopper method. All right, so to get back to the workflow here, we're gonna go ahead and just um, continue on. I'm basically just gonna go ahead and copy this workflow. So just grab everything over here and alt drag copy with the exception of the world origin. Okay, there's that. And now for this one, I'm going to use a different size. 
And this is going to be my vertical members. All right. And what are we doing here? So to get the vertical members, I'm going to start with where we left off at the beginning here, which was getting just the, the, lower, um, the lower line right here. And I'm just going to do a divided curve. So go to curves, go to division, go to divide distance. And I'm going to grab one of these as well. I'll drag a copy and bring that down. And then while I'm thinking about it, I might as well just make these a group and call that with a scribble control panel. If I can spell. And then right click and add that into the group. And there we go. OK, so now what I'm going to do is just bring that into the divisions. Uh, the divided distance and then take that one edge and feed it into the curve. Cool, so we can see that it's starting to propagate along the bottom here. So now in a similar fashion, I'm going to go ahead and just project those points, but instead of the x direction, I'm going to project them in the y direction, or actually the z. So z is relative to the ground, so that's my direction. These are my points and the geometry I'm gonna project them on is my edge curves. And if it's not working, you can um, try to extract just the edge that you wanna use. So I can just do a list item, go into my BREP here, pull out the edges and get just the one I want. So if it's not getting it right away, just pull up a little slider saying zero less than three, because I know this is a four sided B rep in here. And then just feed that in and just use the slider to work your way around until you find the edge that you want. I want this upper edge to be my cut edge. That's the geometry I'm going to project onto. And there's my points. Okay, so now I can just pull up a, a panel and quickly take a look at how many items I have. I have 18 here, and then I have 18 there, so I, I have matching number of points. Um, basically, I could just do a line from here with these as my second points and these as my first points which will create that right there. Um, if I don't want to do that, uh, just if I have some issues with that, I could just, just as easily graft um, each of these points just to make sure that, each, that they're getting on their own branch. Um, and then that will hopefully stabilize um, the associations you're making. All right, so there we go. Got our lines happening. Now we just need to map um, our profile curves onto that again. So I'm going to go to transform, orient, and we want to go ahead and grab um, our source plane, which we got from our copy here. So just for the plane, feed that into A, and then the curves. Um, We've got this one by 18 highlighted there. So that's going to be the geometry that we feed. And we just got to get our target planes now. So our target planes, we're going to do similar to before, right? Similar to before. Um, I might as well do this in parallel. So it's pretty much lined up. And we'll make that the principal. Okay, so we're just going to do a similar workflow here. Got my um, Geometry right there. Okay. Okay. So then there's my lines. I'm just going to alt drag a copy to extend those lines as well. 
And I'm only going to do it at the top. So instead of two at the bottom, two at the top, I'm going to do zero for the bottom. Okay. So you can see it's only extending it at the top there. And then I'm going to move this out of the way here. Okay. So I've got my lines. Cool. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and just copy, copy all this stuff right here. Okay. So then just to see what's going on, I'm building a plane down here at the bottom. I'm feeding that in as my target plane. So now, again, for this one, I can see that it's aligned to one side. If I want that to be on center, I can do so um, by just going back to the beginning where I'm targeting it just like before with the percentage symbol, I can just uh, right click on that and say one half mid, and that's gonna move it back to 50% exactly. Okay. So now I've got my profile curves right there. And again, if this isn't going the direction I want, I could just rotate that around with my picker here. And so I've got everything kind of on the same side as intended. And then now I can go ahead and do my sweep. Okay, so I'm just gonna go up to surface and sweep one, and then take those as my section profiles, and my rails are gonna be these guys back here. And voila, there we go. So now that's all extending vertically. Okay, and then, um, we're going to do that split one more time. So I'm actually just going to alt drag or copy. And we've got the same cutting geometry as before, which is that kind of upper piece right there. And I'm just going to cut these newly formed verticals. And then um, just alt drag a copy of all this. And feed that in. And now you can see that we've got just our sub geometry there. So, um, yeah, pretty much it. And then finally, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just feed in one more of these guys. And did that just create two of those? All right, so so I'm going to go ahead and just take the same name, feed in that geometry, oops, and voila. Um, pretty much it. So then if I wanted to get that extrusion like I talked about, um, we can basically just do that with our reference curve we had back here. Um, I use that to cut the geometry. I want to get just the upper curve. Um, we can do that as well. But yeah, let's do just the upper curve. So that's basically just this one, um, which is right there. So then um, I'm going to grab that curve. It's going to give it a name here. And uh, before I go too much farther, let's just go ahead and test this really quickly. So if I take that and just drag it up here.
And that's why I should have done this the right way. Um, so basically, I should have just taken that entire upper curve section and um, basically, I exploded that and found this member here inside of this set there. It wouldn't work. Um, I'm just going to create a series. This is not the most stable way to do it, but who cares? I'm going to do two for a count. Uh, I'm going to start at zero, which is fine. It's going to give me um, a count of three. There we go. And then I'm going to do item. And from a list of these edges, And actually, I'm just going to do it this the opposite way. I'm just going to say remove, remove item at index, call index at two, because I know in this list at call at index number two is that lower edge. That's all I want to do is remove that. Then I'm going to join these curves by typing in J. And then that's going to create one curve. And then that's going to be my cutting curve. So, yeah. So then, I feed that into my curve. There we go. Okay, so I'm adding in some intelligence here. Um, basically, I'm grabbing uh, just the upper section there, just so I can make sure I get the length out, so that um, basically what I'm going to do is uh, 
move. I'm going to move um, these points along uh, the X direction just because it's kind of, it's been unstable trying to use the project method. So I'm just going to try to simplify that. So I'm going to move it along the X to the amplitude of this total length plus um, like, let's just add five. So that I know um, I have enough distance there. And then, and then from there, I can create my points. So I'm going to lock the solver and I'm going to say, go ahead and take these points and feed in those endpoints there. And then, okay, so I've got that happening. And now I just need to do some more splitting. So basically, um, take those, and then I'm extending those lines, and I'm working on the trajectory and splitting that geometry with cutting shape. And let's see how that's doing. Okay. And then basically, I just need to make sure I'm getting the geometry back that's inside of the shape here. So rather than the largest area, I'm going to do midpoint. So go to curve. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. I can do it like this. I could say point in B rep as my test. And the point I want to test is basically at like 10%, I would say. Maybe 10% of this curve. And that point is, let's do it, let's just do point oh one. Point oh one before the extended curve. Okay, so I'll evaluate curve, reparameterize that curve. Okay. And then grab all of that. And then I'm going to use pufferfish and say surface and offset surface, which is in here somewhere. And I'm going to say both sides is true. And the distance I'm going to say is one. And the surface is my base surface, which is way back here. Boom. There's that. And then I just need to make sure both sides and create solid is true. And the output is a closed B rep. All right. Awesome. So if I do the B rep inclusion test, against these new points I just made. And that's that. Okay, then I can test to see what I'm getting. Should be a bunch of true falses. And then if it's true, then go ahead and keep that. And it should be true for everything. So I actually need to test this along these pre-extended Curves. Ugh.
Basically, I'm just not going to sort by um, area. And we'll just hope it works out. So rather than the first index, we're going to try to go for the number one index. There we go. All right. So now we basically have it. All right. Okay. 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 So then the final step is going to be, we're just going to take the same extrusion and we're gonna just do one direction so I'm gonna do this and I'm just gonna say give me um, give me like two feet and I'm gonna set the expression to be nothing And then I'm just going to reverse the direction here. And there we go. And then the final step is to just offset that surface. I'm going to use this one up here from Pufferfish. And then I'm going to say both sides is false. The distance is going to be um, one, but I'm just going to make, make it like a specific amount of a specific thickness so I'm going to say one inch and then just do concatenate inches and then um, convert the document units, which is going to give me a percentage 0 0.08333, and then that's going to be my distance, and then my surface, and voila. Now, if it is going the wrong direction, you just have to flip surface. So I can just do that flip. Um, 
if it's a, if it's if it's a B rep, you can just say flip B rep. I think that's a puffer fish component again. And that should go the other direction. But um, either way, for the most part, it's gonna work out. And there you go. So now we just gotta do one more of these little alt drag copy. Feed that in, and now we have our finished, um, our finished thing. And if I just want to clean this up, I'm just unpinning and deleting some of the stuff I don't need. Um, you can do that. If you don't want it to be maintained by Grasshopper anymore, you can just unpin and delete anything you don't want. But you can see we're getting some really clean uh, geometry cuts there. And then the most exciting part, let me just do a save here and load that into a project. So now if I go ahead and load that up into my project, you can see that it's coming in right there. And um, it's pretty exciting because if we wanted to actually just do a crop view, I could just do um, selection box and that's gonna update the thingy here. Okay, so then what's cool is if I I uh, grab this section box and start to drag that down. I can actually set this visibility graphics to casework. And I can say, go ahead and override the cut pattern to be some kind of color. And that should work, but I forgot to update my family. So I forgot to change this. Even though this stuff is set to casework as a sub uh, category, I forgot to change the category of the family I loaded it into, which I can do up here. Just going to casework, saying OK, save, load, <clears throat> load that into my project, and overwrite. And now you can see um, it's cuttable geometry. So anywhere I'm cutting in my project, that's now gonna work. So um, yeah, we'll look at documenting this stuff in future lessons for now. I'm just kind of stoked that it's working, that we can actually start to document this, this stuff. And uh, we'll look at tagging and splitting and, and kind of creating additional members um, in future videos to make this even more rational but it's pretty exciting to be able to create um, a representation in Revit that's driven completely by what you've got in Rhino. So anyway, I know this one got super, super long, but I think it's a really powerful workflow. And um, yeah, so let me know if you have any comments or questions on what you're looking to create next. Um, and here's that example of kind of the solution so we'll look at render materials, we'll look at um, how to create these door openings. There's a bunch more layers to this that we need to do, but I think this is a pretty good case study example. Um, and hope you learned something. So definitely uh, look forward to seeing you in future videos. Hey, did you survive? Did you survive? I think I survived. A <laughs> um, lot going on here. But I'm curious to hear what you are learning and what you're curious to learn next. Definitely let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.